Chapter 1.3, Planes of Movement. In this video, we will look at the three planes of movement and their location within the body, and how these planes are used in sport. So then, planes of movement. In order to explain how the body moves, we use imaginary lines or planes that run through the body. These planes divide the body in three different ways. And we have the frontal plane, the transverse plane, and the sagittal plane. So look at the frontal plane first then. Okay, this is a plane that runs vertically and divides the body into front and back sections. Okay, and the front is also known as the anterior, whilst the back is also known as the posterior. So you can see from the diagram there, clearly the plane is dividing the body into the front and back sections. Within the frontal plane then, uh, the movement that takes place is abduction and adduction. So we can remember from our previous topic that abduction is taking the limbs uh, away from the midline of the body and adduction is adding to the midline of the body. So a brilliant example from sport uh, of movement within the frontal plane would be the star jump or the leg action at the hip during the breaststroke. Moving on to the transverse plane then. Okay, this is a plane that runs horizontally and divides the body into upper and lower sections. Okay, so the upper section is also known as the superior section, and the lower section is also known as uh, referred to as inferior. Okay, so you could quite clearly see there that the transverse plane is running horizontally and creating that top and bottom section. Within the transverse plane, plane then, okay, the movement that takes place is mainly rotation. Okay, so a sporting example would be a golf swing when teeing off or torso twist with a medicine ball. So you can quite clearly see from the diagram there, uh, if we look at the, I mean, the the hip, as the golfer pulls back his club, he's twisting or rotating in one direction, and then as he starts to strike the ball, he then rotates in the opposite directions. Okay, so rotation takes place within the transverse plane. And finally, the sagittal plane. Okay, so this plane is uh, another one that runs vertically, but this time it divides the body into left and right sections. Okay. The movement that takes place in this particular plane uh, is flexion and extension. So we know that flexion is um, decreasing the angle at a joint, whereas extension is increasing the angle at a joint. Okay, so a sporting example of movement in the sagittal plane would be uh, a bicep curl or the leg action um, during sprinting. So you can quite clearly see uh, in the diagram the sprinter, uh, her right leg, uh, there's flexion both at the hip and the knee and then in the left leg she's got extension at the hip and the knee. Thing to remember then with planes of movement that um, although we've kind of identified some examples there of um, skills that just move in one particular plane, a lot of skills um, use a combination of movements within all three different planes. Okay, so we've, I've used the example of um, a discus thrower. So he's got that rotation um, occurring at the hip in the the transverse uh, plane. Then obviously he's going to have some flexion in in his legs which is um, the sagittal plane, and then um, the, the first plane, the frontal plane, he has that movement, uh, that abduction, in order to get his arms up um, in preparation to throw the discus. So then, we've looked at the three different planes, and we've got um, some examples of how they're used in sport. What you need to do now is complete your flip learning mat, and make sure you come to a lesson fully understanding uh, all three particular planes and how they can be applied so that your test at the start of the lesson you're getting more or less full marks and you can demonstrate that knowledge and understanding. 